You don't need to go to Niagara Falls when you can eat some Brian Falls. What's going on, Asker Diecast Collectors and Diecast Viewers on YouTube? This is our virtual Big Bri here, and welcome to the 202nd episode of the NASCAR Diecast News, hosted by me, Bridal Floyd Jr. As always, guys, I'm bringing you all your weekly, or in this case, bi-weekly NASCAR Diecast News throughout each and every month until the very end of the 2018 NASCAR Diecast season. And my God, guys, we are literally just ending this Diecast season, and um, what, we got like this month and then another two more months to spare. Um, might even get some late releases for um, early 2019. Speaking of that, Right, guys we do got to talk about some 2019 cars for the pre-orders list but of course we also got to talk about your newly released diecast from our good friends at plan b sales and line of racing we got uh like 12 new 164s to we'll be talking about and three exclusive 124s uh one of them is actually uh one that is a truck promo diecast so be on the lookout for that and we um speaking of pre-orders guys we got a lot of cool pre-orders we talk about including um like the sh uh, including uh, what happened at richmond and at the charlotte roval as you guys tell behind me, I'm probably going to be a little biased when it comes to that Charlotte Roll overview. <laughs> but, uh, man, that's going to be a lot of cool stuff to talk about on the pre-orders. Did I mention 2019 diecast? We got a lot of cool 2019 pre-orders for Hendrick Motorsports and for a lot of the Chevrolets. So, already off to a great start. And we do got three new cancellations as well to go along with uh, the pre-order list like we usually do. It's like bread and butter for the diecast news. <laughs> and we do got some exciting NASCAR, di uh, some NASCAR diecast news for NASCAR authentics uh not one but two little news to share with you guys we got uh, the official reveal and review of wave eight and the big moment of them all guys you guys probably are going to be really hyped up for this let's just say lionel is um it might be official that we could be seeing 164 trucks coming to the gold series and for nascar authentics but you know what guys i'm going to be done talking let's go ahead and kick things off with the nascar icon news as it will start right now but before we do that guys let's go ahead and take a look at the slideshow Alrighty guys, welcome to the NASCAR Diecast News, I'm Brian LaFloy Jr. And let's get things started with your newly released diecast from our good friends at Plan B Sales and K-State Diecast. And like always guys, we're going to talk about the 164s and then we're going to quickly get on to the 124 exclusives. So let's get on to uh, the 164 diecast and the first one up is Matt Kenseth, number 6, Wineham Rewards Ford Fusion for uh, Roush Fenner Racing. So of course you guys know that uh, the number 6 car has been driven by Matt Kenseth and um trevor bain and now we're gonna have ryan newman in the six r for next year so uh 
it's very unaware that we're going to actually have uh, this uh, sponsorship coming along for next year. I mean, I do believe that Performance Plus Motor Oil has been confirmed on board or possibly for that. Uh, doubt Apple Care will, but uh, back to the diecast, guys. This is actually a really cool looking paint scheme. Uh, this car is also available in the 124 ARC, and I believe Kenseth first drove this when he made his announcement at uh, Kansas, guys, the first Kansas race back in uh, spring slash summertime. So, uh, fairly nice looking diecast, guys. I do like the uh, blue and uh, white. It kind of reminds me like a I don't know, this car kind of reminds me like of, uh, I don't know, like clouds. I don't know. It's a very random comment, but just I, I like it when cars, you know, just uh, give me those little visual aspects. So, uh, yeah, fairly nice looking car that we got for this um, Kenseth car. Next up, we got Eric Amaral's number 10 gold bowling car that he drove at the Watkins Glen race, which was also known as the gold bowling race <laughs> or the gold bowling at the Glen. Um, God, I've lost track of how many uh, different sponsors they had um, at the track <laughs> for Watkins Glen. Um, but yeah, I mean, I was pretty surprised that this car actually made it. I thought it was canceled, but uh, it did made it in the 164 scale. I believe the 124 RC and the Elite was canceled. So from what I know, this is possibly a 164 exclusive. So if you guys are looking for some great variety for your Eric Amarillo I guess that's not a Smithfield car. As much as we all love Smithfield, we got to mix it up sometimes. And the gold bowling car definitely does the trick. Um, fairly nice looking car. I would probably recommend it to any Almirola fans or uh, any bowling fans out there. So really cool. Next up, we got Kyle Busch's number 18 M&M's flavor vote card that he recently won at the uh, first Richmond race. Which, if you guys don't know already who won the flavor vote uh, for M&M's, there was like three different flavors. It was the mint one, which... The winner was decided at the Walkers Glen race, hence why Kyle Busch drove the mint green M&M's car, which is cool because I did try that, and um, yeah, I do like mint. But uh, back to the diecast, uh, they actually are making that diecast as well, but uh, pretty cool looking car. Uh, I really like the variation that we got for the M&M's cars for this year. I mean, it's not like we've had, you know, the M&M's or just the M&M's car mode. We've had, you know, so much variety with the M&M's cars lately. And uh, this one is a great obsession. And, um, heck, I would recommend getting it, guys. Plus, it uh, would be cool if you guys want to replicate some uh, raced wins with this car. Because, like I said, he drove this car to victory lane at the Richmond Spring Race. So, really nice. Next up, I'm going to really horribly pronunciate this name wrong. I probably should have used Google Translate for this. But we got an Arca car, guys, and it's for uh, Leilani Munters, number 20, vegan strong. I know I said that wrong. Dot com Arca diecast. So a very random release diecast that we got. What is Arca car, guys? This is the uh, second um, and final, I believe, Arca release that we got for this year. Um, unfortunately, uh, the Daytona winner, uh, which was Michael Self, got canceled. And the Thad Moffitt uh, Performance Plus number 46 car also got canceled both in 164 scales so um yeah pretty ironic that we've had you know both female drivers that are driving an arca got made so you can definitely sense a favoritism right there well you kind of see where i'm going but uh, back to this diecast guys i mean i'm not really too familiar with the driver but it is really cool that we do got another arca diecast and this one's all bright green i mean probably not it's probably gonna be a, uh, a very underrated compared to natalie deckers because you know natalie deckers queen am i right <laughs> um but yeah guys this is that's actually not a bad diecast guys I, I it's really cool that they got this car and i believe if you order from her website you can get this car autographed in uh 124 and the 164 scale i believe the 164 scale but uh fairly nice looking car we'll recommend uh, we'll recommend i mean if you love green and you like vegan then <laughs> this is the car to go right here next up we got paul menard's uh, quaker state card that he drove at the kentucky race which usually is sponsored by the quaker state uh, 400 um, so this paint scheme actually is very similar to uh, um, Ryan Blaney's Penzo car, which I mentioned on that review for NASCAR Authentics, which is pretty cool because you guys know that Wood Brothers and Team Penske are, have had this alliance. So uh, plus this is a fairly different uh, car that we got for the Wood Brothers, but it is also interesting that we got Quaker State that uh, has always been with Paul Menard. I thought it was going to be, um, it, it, I thought they were associated with just the Menards brand, but it looks like they stayed with Paul Menard and. I guess you could say this is one, probably his uh, latest longtime sponsor that he's had, I mean, along with Menards, of course. But um, uh, I'm getting a lot of flashbacks uh, of this Great Crusade car to uh, when Casey Kane and Mark Martin drove the car, when, when they drove the number five car. Just how the colors look very, very similar. But um, I do like this, though, even though it's on a Ford and not a Chevy. Uh, 
since I made that comparison, but um, fairly nice looking car. I would recommend this for some variety for your stop motions. Next up, we got a pretty surprising card that I thought was going to get canceled. We got uh, David Reagan's number 38, 1000 bulbs.com. Jeez, that's a lot of light bulbs. <laughs> uh, I wonder what they sell. Probably light bulbs. Who knows, guys? I mean, let's go to 1000bulbs.com and see what they actually sell. Um, I would, but uh, I got, you know, I, I, I got a lot of stuff to talk about. So, don't really have the time for that. But, um, this is a pretty basic looking car. But, um, it's almost like the FR8 Auctions car, but just uh, a little bit more different. I mean, it's mostly, uh, I don't know, it's it's definitely different. We've never had a car produced like this forever, but, um, or actually ever for Dave Reagan. So, uh. But Dave Reagan really hasn't had that really cool looking paint teams. I mean, you look at Dave Reagan's cars and they're just like, eh, okay, yeah, th those those are okay, I guess. And this one's probably one of them. But, you know, if you're really looking for a Dave Reagan car, maybe get this car or get the FR8 Auctions. I mean, whichever one shows up first, which I'm sure both of them are because the FR8 Auctions car wasn't, uh, it, it's not too hard to find because it was just recently released as well. But, um, yeah, pretty nice. Next up, we got everyone's favorite, Kyle Larson, the number 42 McDonald's Chevrolet Camaro ZL1 for Ganassi Racing. So, uh, as you guys know, this is the exact replicated paint scheme that we got from Jamie Murray's car. And I got a good feeling that this could be possibly, uh, if it's not going to go with Kurt Busch in the one car for next year, this could be Kyle Larson, uh, the, 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 the McDonald's sponsorship could be going to the 42 car for next year. Um, if how things are going because you guys know Jamie Murray is leaving the one car But um, really nice that we actually got a McDonald's car guys I mean shoot I think the last time Kyle Larson drove a McDonald's car was when he was with Turner Scott Motorsports in What like 2013 or 2014? So that's a while ago So it's cool to see him, you know be back with that sponsor and um, heck this would be a cool car to get guys I mean uh it's pretty odd that actually the Jamie McMurray McDonald's car didn't got released first because we usually are used to that car and this car did even though you could get that car in NASCAR Authentics. So I find that pretty ironic that we never got this car yet for the Gold Series for McMurray's, but this is a good substitute if you guys really want that McDonald's car. Because I gotta admit, the McDonald's car does look pretty sleek for um, both McMurray and Larson. So yeah, I recommend this uh, along with all the Larson cars that we've had for this year. Uh, next up, we got uh, not one, not two, but three number 60 Ford uh, Mustangs for the Xfinity Series. And you guys probably wonder who they are. It is Austin Sendrick, Chase Briscoe, and Ty Majeski, guys. They all have uh, cars available for that for the number 60 Ford. The notorious number 60, which pretty ironic that won a championship in 2015, but now it's mostly known in 2018 pretty uh, irrelevant because... We used to see this car a lot, uh, mostly in the wall. I mean, and all these three guys are pretty, uh, <laughs> are pretty, I mean, well, especially Majeski. But, um, by the way, congratulations to Chase Briscoe, man, for winning at the Roll Bowl race um, for the Xfinity Series. Um, that that kid definitely deserves a full-time ride, unlike Austin Sindrick. I'm not hating on Sindrick, but Sindrick hasn't impressed me to be in that Penske car yet because he's running top equipment, and he's not running that well. So Chase Briscoe kind of deserves it. Plus... Briscoe has more wins than Austin Sindrick in NASCAR. Well, like, Briscoe has three, and Sindrick only has one. I mean, I'm counting both Camping World and um, Xfinity wins here. But, um, and back to Austin Sindrick, guys, we also got another car to talk about is his per uh, Pertec car, which is, uh, I actually thought this car was canceled as well, but uh, my memory must be shot because uh, this car actually made it in the uh, 164 scale. But uh, fairly nice looking car. I do remember the Pertex sponsorship that came on board uh, with Matthew Bradman at the uh, 101st, uh, at the 100th running of the Indianapolis 500. So I kind of got a little excited when they went with Team Pen with the, when they went to uh, not only Team Penske, but also with Prosper and Racing. But um, I would probably recommend getting this car. Um, this is like the third Austin Senior car that we got released for this year. So, you know, it's cool that none of his cars have got canceled. Um, surprisingly, because, you know, he hasn't run that well in either the 60 or the 22. Um, I mean, hopefully next year he'll probably pick up the pace. If not, then I don't know, guys. I mean, uh, he, he's the son of Tim Centric, So, highly doubt we're going to see him kicked out of Team Penske anytime soon. Because money talks, or unless you know a family member in the business, that's how you're going to get a good ride. But, um, yeah, the, the, overall, guys, some really nice-looking uh, uh, Roush Fennel racing cars that we got. And uh, the last car to be talking about for the 160 Wars, we got Alex Bowman's number 88 Nationwide Insurance Patriotic Car. Um, I do love the stars on this car. I mean, it really does look nice. Um, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I don't know. I mean, a lot of people didn't really like last year's. I still kind of like last year's a little bit more. But this one definitely looks very modern. I mean, it definitely 
fits Alex Bowman's um, car. It's it, it's I'm trying to say is it's something different. I mean, it's not bad or anything. I do like it. It's very simple, but um, I'm glad they decided to use stars. I mean, uh, it does kind of remind me of Dale Jr.'s Patriotic car from what, like 2016 when he used the stars. Um, but I still love the stars and stripes, guys. Um, easily, that's my favorite from 2015. Plus, he won in that car as well. But um, overall, guys, some really nice looking die casts that we got for the 164s. And now let's get on to the 124 exclusives. And we got three of them to talk about. And the first one up it is the Stuart Haas Racing 10th Anniversary Program car, which is a 124 exclusive because you guys know this car was canceled in 164 scale. Now, usually, I don't recommend, um, you know, uh, color um, special. Uh, color finishes or program cards, but I decided to talk about this because if this is probably the time to get um, you know this car because Stuart Haas Racing, one of the best teams that we got in NASCAR, especially for this year with Kevin Harvick and Kurt Busch and all those guys out there. Um, even shout out to the guys at uh, the Xfinity Series because uh, you know Cole Custer definitely looks like he's got a good future. Has shown that much lately, but it looks like he will eventually. And um, recently, like I just talked about, Chase Briscoe just won with. Um, Stuart's racing equipment, but uh, yeah, I mean, I have not really much to say to, about this car, but if you if you are a huge fan of Stuart Haas Racing, probably recommend getting this car, um, even though it's on that generic mold, but um, still not too bad, but it's okay. Next up, we got uh, this one's going to be a favorite because he just recently uh, ran this car at the Roll, uh, the Charlotte Roller Race. We got Daniel Hermerick's number 8 Smoky Mountain Herbal Snuff Car, and they only produce this car in the 124 scale because you guys know this is a tobacco product, um, so they can't really put it on 160 boards unless we'll get an unsponsored Danny Hemmer car. But there's always custom makers out there, but if you take a look, I mean, you can definitely tell it's exclusive because we do get a special uh, packaging and box that comes with this, so uh, fairly nice. I mean, I do like this. Uh, a lot of people actually found this car at the Charlotte Roval race, but after that race, it got released as well. So, or actually on the day of that race, uh, it got released to, from, to uh, Plan B Sales at their warehouse. But, um, yeah, you know, th this car, actually, I really like it. It's got like an, uh, I think it looks like it has a matte finish to it. Um, but really nice looking car, guys. I mean, it looks like, as you guys already know about Daniel Hemmerich, he's going to, he's going to be replacing Ryan Newman's car for next year. It's uncertain if he's going to drive the 31 or they're going to switch to the 8. Which that'd be cool, but a lot of people still like that font, the 8. I'm kind of getting used to it. I mean, you gotta get used to different fonts eventually, man. I mean, they can't have the DEI 8 because, because uh, you know, er, um, Teresa Earnhardt will get involved with the lawsuit with that because she has the rights to that. But I know it would be cool for a throwback, but I'm hoping we can see the 8 car return for next year. That'd be really cool. Daniel Hemrick, I mean, pretty underrated driver, but he's, uh, he's, he's definitely impressed me, man. Plus, we'll love to see him victory lane because you guys know I am a Carl Evers fan. Uh, I haven't rooted for Daniel Hubbard yet, but, um, you know, I'll give him a thumbs up once he, uh, cause he does the backflips, um, uh, in victory lane, so, um, yeah, that'd be really cool, plus, you know, haven't seen a backflip done in a while since Carl Edwards, uh, stepped away, and the last truck to be talking about, I, if you guys noticed, I said truck, we got Noah Gregson's number 18 Safe Flight Autoglass, um, yeah, this car, uh, hopefully will be safe for you guys, oh, there we go with the puns, alright, I'm out of here, guys, uh, for every time I say a pun, uh, <laughs> Take a shot. Well, probably shouldn't do that because there's a lot of uh, underage people watching. So, uh, I take that back. <laughs> but back to uh, the No Gregson truck car. Uh, I said truck car. Wow. You guys already tell. I'm worried. Uh, I'm even. Uh, uh, I'm just too excited for all this news that we got. So, yeah. This is a truck car. So, we got No Gregson's uh, Safe Flight Autoglass truck car. I'm just screwing with you guys. But, um, yeah, this is actually a really nice looking car um, that we got for. Um, for Noah Gregson, and you can only get this uh, truck at the uh, Kyle Busch uh, official website um, under their store. I'll probably provide the link in the description if you guys want to go and uh, buy this because it is in stock. Uh, the rest of the Kyle Busch cars have not been in stock yet, like Harrison Burnett's and uh, Todd Gillen's, but probably should be out eventually because seeing how fast Noah Grayson's truck got in. So, um, plus, also, if you guys want more details about this truck, feel free to check out another cool YouTuber known as Bushwhacker Reviews. You guys probably know who he is. He reviews a lot of 124 diecasts, and um, he did a review on this truck. So, quick shout out to him because, you know, with all these diecasts uh, that we got to talk about, so we got to, you know, of course, mention some YouTubers. So, you know, uh, go ahead and give uh, Bushwhacker Reviews a good uh, follow if you guys haven't already. 
well, subscribe. It's not Twitter, but. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that wraps up on the uh, all the diecasts that were released for this episode. Alrighty, guys, and now it's time to get on to your pre-orders. But before we do that, guys, let's go ahead and look at uh, a, an exclusive early release diecast that we got from you know one of our good uh, super mega fans for the NASCAR diecast news uh, at Wimmer33 fan on um, Instagram, and he actually uh, went to the Charlotte Mobile race and he ended up finding uh, not only Daniel Hemmer car, which we already saw, but it is also Matt Kenseth's 2018 Roush All Star Ford Fusion. So you guys take a look. This is a uh, throwback to uh, the classic. Mark Martin uh, car that we that uh, he used to that they uh, I think it was the, the uh, classic Valvoline Eagle One car that Mark Martin used to drove in the uh, 90s so uh, really nice looking fine we'll talk more about this car when it gets released in a fully more detailed review but decided to go ahead and give a little shout out to uh, Women 33 fan on uh, Instagram so give him a follow if you guys haven't already um, he's helped us a lot with um, since he lives around the area of, uh, Con of uh, Concord North Carolina which is right where uh, Lionel Racing is. So he mostly is very lucky with getting all the new releases. So really appreciate uh, your support, uh, Wimmer33 fan, and um, keep it up with those photos, yeah. Uh, keep it up with that, uh, with those photos, man. And uh, with that in mind, let's go ahead and start off with the pre-orders, guys. Now, we're not going to really talk to uh, every single pre-order, but we're going to be talking about three very important ones in particular. Of course, two of them have to do with your race wins. So, the first one up is Kyle Busch's number 18, M&M's Richmond race win. And what can I say? Not too much to say about this. Otherwise, uh, Kyle Busch just scored yet another win, what, the sixth or seventh win in the Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series. Um, he swept both uh, Brist, uh, well, uh, yeah, not yeah, last year, he swept both Bristol races. Um, and Kyle Busch, man, definitely, uh, I mean, whether you love him or you hate him, he swept both Richmond races along with um, teammate in the Xfinity Series. Chris Rebell also swept in the, in both rich races so pretty ironic the 20 and the 18 in 2018 coincidence probably conspiracy theory who knows nascar man that's what it is <laughs> but um yeah this is a pretty cool looking car and it's actually really nice to see the m&m's car the original classic yellow m&m's car be back in victory lane i mean as much as we love the uh, all the different schemes that we got for Kyle Busch, it's really cool to see him back in uh, victory lane in this car plus this car will have the driver emoji on it which you know since they took away that white background i don't mind that i mean if they're looking to fill up all those gaps that they got since they've lost contingency sponsors i say i'm starting to like these emojis but then you get some other drivers that which the next one i'm going to show you still have that god awful white background for the emoji and that uh, is the Ryan Blaney Pennzoil Charlotte Roval race win. But first of all, guys, let's talk about that Charlotte Roval race. That was easily, I mean, next to Watkins Glen, but actually, you know what? I love Watkins Glen, but man, that Charlotte Roval race, I didn't have high hopes. I thought it was going to be a total shit show. I thought it was going to be a wreck fest, and we would never see anything like this NASCAR ever again. I'm hoping they're going to keep this now because I was fairly impressed with the racing that we got at the Charlotte Roval uh, race. I mean, man, we had some great racing. It wasn't really much of a cluster uh, mess until like, what, well, like, like 75% of the race was actually really clean. And then like, what, well, like the last 15 to 20%. It was total chaos. I mean, plus we all know by the, the last stage um, heading towards the checkered flag, it was going to be nuts. And it did. And what about that finish, man? I mean, of course, you guys probably want to hear my thoughts because I am a Mark Truex Jr. fan. And all I can say is that, um, you know, I got respect for both drivers. I think my driver definitely overreacted a lot too much. And, I, you know, I'm going to say that. I mean, I could go and defend my driver saying, oh, you know, well, you know, Truex is in, uh, under a lot of, you know, stress. Well, you know, so is Jimmy Johnson. So I understand the frustration that Mark Truex Jr. had. But I think he took it just way too far because... Jimmy Johnson was in such a much more must-win situation. I mean, heck, yeah, I mean, winning the race would guarantee him a spot, but Jimmy Johnson was just so hungry for a win that just, he wanted that win. He didn't even care about the playoffs, all right, or making it or not. He went just full balls at this race, and he was running fairly well. I think he was running better than Truex or Ryan Blaney, in my opinion. Um, Johnson was up there towards the front throughout the whole race, and just to see that happen on the last, on the last lap, Easily brought a lot of drama. I know a lot of Jimmy Johnson fans out there are, you know, severely mad at what happened. I know you guys are probably sick and tired of how the playoffs are. I totally understand you. I was in that situation with Carl Edwards and Mark Truex Jr. 
something needs to change but the racing at the charlotte charlotte Oval race that was amazing and that finish i mean heck man i could probably I, i'll probably start doing race reactions because man i should have recorded my reaction when we when this race happened i i'm almost 23 years old and let's just say this finish literally made me voice crack every time uh when, when i especially when ryan blaney came out and won and passed those two and won the race that's when i just completely lost it that was just a freaking amazing finish if you're a ryan blaney fan or shit if you're a nascar fan in general this race just kicked ass. I mean, I mean, <laughs> I hate to bring out the profanity, but just, I really had to make my statement wrong on this because this race was just absolutely amazing. So, great positive feedback that we got for Char for the Charlotte Oval race, and hopefully next year we will keep it. But um, this, and speaking of that, guys, this race win, uh, it's only exclusive right now in the 124 scale, but we could see it for NASCAR Authentics. I mean, depending how things are going, because... A lot of people love the rollable guys, so, but, um, yeah, this is available. Of course, I got on pre-order because you guys know I am a Ryan Blaney fan, too, but, um, this is going to be one hell of a diecast to get for the raced version section, but pre-order, guys, you got to pre-order, and the last car to talk about for the pre-orders, we got to talk about Jimmy Johnson's finale race. No, not finale for NASCAR, his Lowe's finale car, which I kind of expected this coming, but... It's not his 2006 slash 2007 slash 2008 championship car. It is actually his rookie car, guys. The car that he drove in 2002 that's kind of started it all. And what can I say, man? I th This is a great way to set off. I mean, yeah, I wish it was his first championship win from 2006. But you know what, man? This is probably the best they can do. I mean, definitely a lot better than the throwback that we had for this year. And, you know, the Power Pride car was cool for the 2001 car, but, um, that he's racing at ISM. But, this one right here, I think, is really going to hit a lot of people. I mean, uh, but the only thing I don't really like is that this car will have the fluorescent yellow. just have a standard yellow, which, you know, little details like that. And you can also see the A-pillar is also, Henry Motorsports loves to screw up that A-pillar. So, they just, you know, add this, an incorrect color on the A-post. But, you know... It's already going to be ruined enough with that Twitter logo, which I'm hoping it doesn't, but it looks like the emojis and the Twitter logos will continue for the rest of the playoffs. So that's going to kind of ruin the car for me, but hopefully they will get rid of that horrendous white background and maybe this paint scheme will look nice. But overall, I'm really excited for this, uh, for, for the finale race for Lowe's, um, even though it's kind of hard to say that after what happened at the Charlotte Roval, but um, man, it's going to bring a lot of tears to a lot of... Uh, hardcore jimmy johnson fans who has who have been with them since the very beginning so um that yeah that's going to be one hell of a cool event to attend for um and to watch as well and now let's go into the cancellations guys we got three new cancellations to be talking about and the first one up is danny hamlin's number 11 fedex throwback which is a darlington throwback to uh the first time he drove ever in a race car i think back in his late model days now i do actually love this car well first of all it's not actually a sports clips car it's um it's actually a FedEx throwback, and they actually took their time and effort, and um, I know on the original car, it's supposed to be like an all black, but they used the FedEx purple, and in this case, mixing up the colors really works out well, unlike Kyle Larson's DC Solar throwback, which just, you know, kind of killed it for me, didn't even look like a throwback in my opinion. This one really works, but it's so unfortunate because a lot of people really love this throwback. Uh, it was rated one of the best throwbacks that we got for this year, along with William Byron's Exalta and um, the Pennzoil and Skittles car from Joey Logano and um, Kyle Busch. But unfortunately, this is what happens when you don't pre-order. This car has been canceled in every single scale. 124 Elite, 124 ARC, and the 164 scale. So... That's it, guys. Not going to see this car unless it makes a return for NASCAR Authentics, but a big missed opportunity for any Hamlet fans, especially if you guys really love the throwback, but it will not be made in the diecast form for this year of 2018. Next up, we got Matt DiBenedetto's number 32 King Parts Peanuts Halloween car. Pretty appropriate to have this car um, uh, the, to, to, to get canceled right around the corner when Halloween lands, <laughs> but um, this car actually did got made in the 124 ARC scale. If you guys know that is the hood open uh, plastic chassis car, but the 124 Elite and the 164 scale has been canceled. But um, this car has been on the DMP list for quite a while, and a lot of you guys, even Plan B Sales, kind of press you guys to get this car produced. Um, if you guys saw the tweet, the the, the uh, Twitter tweets uh, that Nike fans post, um, they post DMP alerts and. 
Well, they warned you guys, and unfortunately, this car made the chopping block. And the last car to be talking about for the cancellations, we got uh, my boy, Mark Drex Jr., the number 78 Bass Pro Shops Ducks and Limited car. I'm not a big fan of this paint scheme, but I'm very surprised that it only got canceled in the 124 Elite scale. I mean, it's probably going to grow on me eventually, but definitely um, not as good looking as last year's. I mean, that's for certain. I mean, yeah, this car definitely has some controversial to it because you guys know he got involved in that wreck with Kyle Busch. So a lot of people probably get that car to maybe remember that moment. Well, probably not Truex fans because that's one of the worst moments that we've had for this year for Truex. <laughs> But um, at least the 164 scale got made and the 124 ERC version. So good news for any Truex fans out there. But like I said, I'm a Truex fan, but I'm not really digging this paint scheme. But that wraps up on your um, first, that, that wraps up on all the uh, latest news that I just uh, talked about. Alrighty, guys, it's a moment you all been waiting for. It's time for some NASCAR Authentics news, and this is going to be on the Wave 8 official reveal and review for uh, Lino Racing's NASCAR Authentics. 2018 wave eight so let's get things get things started guys so this is easily going to be possibly my favorite wave for this year i mean well first i mean well i'm going to show you got uh, unveil the what's in stores for wave eight and uh here it is guys so like i just mentioned this will possibly be my favorite wave for this year because not only we got three throwbacks in this we also got the return of another liquid color finish and even an NHRA car and some even some really cool looking cars as well that we also got from the uh, Cracker Barrel second wave as well like I just predicted so those Cracker Barrel waves are pretty useless guys but this probably is going to beat the Cracker Barrel wave way out of the water because let's go ahead and get things started so go down the list guys we got uh, nine new uh, cars to be talking about for NASCAR and one new NHRA but let's go ahead and get started with the NHRA car first one up we got Robert Heights uh, AAA Auto Club uh, Chevrolet so uh, really nice looking car I mean definitely something a little more different than we got for Robert Heights um, I think this is the first time we actually got the uh, AAA Auto Club sponsorship if I'm not mistaken um, it's a much more modern scheme that we usually get for um, it's a lot more modern compared to uh, last year's but yeah I mean th this car actually doesn't look too bad in my opinion but you guys know I'm not really big fans of NHRA cars I mean I, I already have two in my collection right now I got the Courtney Force and the John Force 2018 cars but um, maybe this will be another car to get but uh, I usually I'm trying to find a car that will compare this car to maybe if I can find the Joey Logano AAA uh, Auto Club car that NASCAR Authentics uh, from Spin Master made that'd be a cool car to compare if you guys want to see that I mean this is just totally up to you guys of what you guys want um, for content on this channel um, Heck feel free to comment below if you guys want to see some NHRA reviews I mean, I want to hear you guys's uh, thoughts if you guys are interested in that. So uh, let me know um, Then now let's get on to uh, some cars like I predicted that we're going to be from the Cracker Barrel wave to carry over to wave 8 or wave 9 and some of these are pretty predictable except for the throwbacks so um, I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys the cars that are that were recently released for the uh, second Cracker Barrel wave which was the um, Brad Kozowski Auto Trader 2018 car. So yeah, that was that carried over to uh, not only uh, this is the second time that we got it for uh, NASCAR Authentics for 2018, um, and actually the third time overall because we did have the Auto Trader car released from last year. But we also do got another liquid color uh, rare find. But I don't know how many of these are produced. It would be cool if it's like. 222 i mean that'd be rare more rare i don't know maybe 2222 but i highly doubt that i'm just going by because remember the uh, liquid dale jr card 888 those were produced i don't know exactly how many of these are produced but it is going to be another rare find just like the dale jr liquid color chrome which i do have i mean i'm not a big fan of color chrome diecast but i'm telling you guys this is a really cool idea that nascar authentics that has that line of racing has done for nascar authentics and it's actually got a lot of people who aren't really big fans of nascar diecast to collect these because some people might only just like to collect those rare cars so um might be a great idea i, I if they could do this for every way which looks like they are um I will like this, so uh, be on the lookout for this liquid color Brad Kozowski Auto Trader car, which will be released in Wave 8 very soon, probably this month, by how things are going. Next up, we got Chase Allen's Mountain Dew Baja Blast car, which is just like, uh, which is another car that carried over from the second Cracker Barrel Wave to here, so nothing surprise right there. I kind of predicted that this car was going to be in the next wave or so, because we usually get a Chase Elliott car, but this one definitely going to be a great diecast to get, along with the Mountain Dew car that was released from Wave 5. And now these next three, of course, I'm uh, 
better get the hype rolling guys because these next three are probably the main reasons why i'm going to get this wave and might be the reason why this is probably my favorite wave so far three of the best throwbacks that we got to right here i mean what more can you say right there well, unfortunately, it looks like we're not going to have a Dawn's throwback wave, uh, an all Dawn's throwback wave like we did from 2016. Um, looks like they're doing what they did with 2017 and splitting it up in, in, in every little different wave, which is cool and all, but just uh, a little disappointing. But, oh well, at least we still got these cars, right? But we got Ryan Blaney's uh, Duracell Menards car, which is a throwback to his father, Dave Blaney, in that number uh, 77 uh, tr uh, Jasper Transmissions. For Taurus so uh, really nice I mean you guys know I, I actually already created the 124 elite scale of this car which I'll be uploading a review on it very soon because it just got shipped out I should have it by Saturday I believe so don't expect a NASCAR authentic sidecast review on this car because I am reviewing the 124 elite so just a heads up on that guys because you guys might be like oh I did you have to review this car and you're a Ryan Blaney fan well I don't want to review a 124 and 164 twice so that's why Next up, we got Kyle Busch's a Skittles Dawn's throwback, which of course is a Ernie Irvin Dawn's, uh, which is a Ernie Irvin throwback. You guys know this is my favorite throwback that we got for this year, and so glad that we got this car, man. I mean, we've had the Skittles car for like what, like uh, we've had the Skittles car released from NASCAR Authentics not once but twice, but now we finally got the throwback scheme for Kyle Busch, and this one, <laughs> I mean, I love this throwback from 2016 with the Interstate Batteries Dale Jarrett tribute, but this one definitely blows it out of the water i love this car love it i can't say any more about this car just get this freaking car guys if you see it on the shelves don't hesitate it don't hesitate get it now it is awesome looking forward to get this car for wave eight we also got um uh, another bush brother in this wave we got uh kurt bush's number 41 haas automation cnc uh Don's throwback which is a throwback to another 2003 car which is the uh car that he finished second at the Southern 500 with Ricky Craven in that tied car so with that one of the best finishes that we got in NASCAR for uh, that for that um for that uh, decade so um another cool looking car I mean I love the variety and the, the amount of effort that they put in this car to make it look like the Sharpie car that he drove in 2003 so great design that we got for Kurt Busch um, we got the Kyle Larson DC solar car which carried over another car that carried over from uh, the second Cracker Barrel wave so nothing surprising right there but I will recommend getting it because it is a nice looking car I kind of like this car a little bit more than his credit one bank car that's just my opinion uh, yet another car that we got from the Cracker Barrel uh, second wave uh, the Bubble Wallace US Air Force Chevrolet Camaro ZL1 I would only recommend getting this car if you're a Bubba fan or if you failed to pick up uh, last year's Aircom roller car only difference is, is that, well, we got a new magnet that comes with it. It's actually a magnet. It's on the Chevrolet body, and it's above Wallace car. And if those differences uh, can set aside with you guys, then go and get this car. I'm still 50-50 on this. Maybe I'll get it, maybe I'm not. But probably will because you guys do like the diecast comparisons. So this would be a cool diecast to compare. And the last car to be talking about, guys, for Wave H, we got Casey Kane's WRL Contractor's Car. This was going to be a car that I kind of speculated that was going to be for NASCAR Authentics. Um, I didn't think it was going to be this recently. I thought they were going to, you know, stretch it out. But I guess Lionel's trying to push out those Casey Kane cars because you guys know Casey Kane has really been doing too well lately. And now Regan Smith is taking over even more races. So it looks like Casey Kane has kind of given up at this point, which is so unfortunate. I mean, God bless him. I'm hoping his health is all right. But, um, yeah, this is actually a really cool looking car. I mean, WRLL Contractors has been a, a pretty reliable sponsor for the for the Levine family racing team. So, um, really nice looking that we got another Levine racing car in this wave. Um, I mean, second one that we got, we got the Proco car and the WRL car. Um, just waiting for a Dumont Jets throwback, guys. Either do his all-star car, uh, his all-star car, or uh, the throwback that he got because... Um, that car is also on the DMP alert as well, guys. So, I mean, can't stress this enough. Pre-order the damn diecast. Otherwise, they're not going to be made. So, yeah. <laughs> but overall, guys, Wave 8 looks really awesome. I do love some of these cars. I would recommend picking up a good majority of these. Um, probably skip out on the Auto Trader car uh, for Brakazowski. But definitely, definitely pick up that Liquid Color car if you guys find it. Because uh, <laughs> you will not regret it, guys. And can't stress this enough. For the love of God, do not take that car out of the package. I mean, I usually take cars out of the package a lot, but for the liquid color cars, do not do it because 
it won't be rare when you do that and these are some really that, that is a very rare card but that wraps up on wave 8 guys for nascar authentics and i got one more exciting news to be talking about you guys remember on the last uh, well like the last few episodes of the nascar nightcast news when i talked about a speculation of that one tweet that um um that, that one truck of that certain one truck um team that talked about uh, having um Lino Racing making 164 truck diecast. If you guys remember that, um, Honardi Racing, I think, or whatever the name is. Um, yeah, I got a little sidetrack right there, so I do apologize for that, guys. I was trying to get my words together because you guys know this is going to be another pretty lengthy episode, which you guys are starting to like. So I do appreciate that because I do put a lot of effort into these videos. So I'm glad you guys are um, liking these, even though I'm trying to make these as short as possible. But this is kind of like a podcast, so expect it to be half an hour or more long uh, for this. For, the, for this episode but um yeah let's just say it could be official now um on the recent episode of lino races a fix um it's official guys we will be getting as i'm going to show you guys a picture of it right here to to show you guys confirmation of 164 truck diecast will be made for starting possibly by next year or uh late this year um so this is some freaking awesome news i mean i know we bash lionel a lot i mean they, they've done you know i mean i know the quality of the die cast haven't been too well i mean a lot of people are still iffy about you know i mean i, I don't I, I let's just say the quality control definitely needs to get better but but you could definitely tell that they are listening to the fan base when we asked them several times when are we gonna get 164 truck die cast and haven't really said anything we've been denied throughout year in year out and now after all this time we are finally going to get them guys not only in the gold series we will be getting them and retailers for nascar authentics and i cannot be more happy than that guys i mean that is awesome that in nascar authentics we are going to have all three premier series in because you guys already know they do make xfinity cars for nascar authentics so i'm hyped i can't wait and Probably now, what's next, guys? Well, um, this is just a, a, a sample mold of what they got. I mean, my only concern is that I'm hoping that they are going to use three different types of molds. I mean, they usually do for um, NASCAR diecast um, for the Fords and the Mustangs and the, uh, uh, well, yeah, the Fords, the Chevrolets, and the um, Toyotas. So I'm hoping they can do that. If not, because um, I know Racing Champions, they used one mold when they made their diecast. But um, no lie, no, I think they will put the time and effort because we don't want to be disappointed with these. And you can already tell a lot of people are hyped up, including myself. I mean, I know I usually hype up a lot of stuff, guys, but this is not clickbait, guys. This is full-on confirmation. I am so glad that Lionel did this. Um, definitely an A++ for putting this out and... I mean, I thought we would expect this very late, guys. Maybe around, like, late this year. But, no, guys. I mean, we are getting close to late uh, year for um, for 2018. But, just so awesome. And now, speculation on what's next, guys. I mean, we uh, the, the lineup did not give an estimated arrival time yet on when these uh, trucks will be made. Or when the pre-order is going to be up. But, all I can say is that um, it will be worth the wait. It will. I mean, once we see some sample pictures and... I'll probably, you know, talk about it more on the next few episodes of the Nightcast News when they release some. But, um, yeah, guys, feel free to tell me you guys' thoughts and opinions and what cars uh, or trucks are you guys are expecting uh, for for uh, Lino Racing to release for the 164s. I'm probably expecting maybe some KBM trucks, some GMS Racing, um, maybe KBM, uh, GMS, maybe Thor Sport. I mean, um, who knows, guys? There's a lot of cool truck teams that we got. Pretty unfortunate we don't have any Brakazowski racing car uh, trucks anymore because they shut down. But um, yeah, feel free to give your guys thoughts and opinions on that as uh, the hype train is going, guys. And hopefully we'll get into more on this and very more for uh, the 164 trucks. I'll give you guys continued updates on that. But for now, guys, that has wrapped up this episode of NASCAR Diecast News. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, guys, please give a good comment, like. If you guys have not already, I highly encourage you guys to subscribe to my channel for any more of the latest NASCAR Diecast reviews, news, and many more to come. But until then, guys, this is the original Big Bro. I thank you guys so much for watching, and I will catch you guys in another NASCAR Diecast News.